Welcome back into the shop today. I'm going to do things a little bit differently. I'm not going to be making anything, but what I'm hoping to do is to start a small video series on how to start with CNC. It's a hobby that's a lot of fun, but it can be extremely frustrating. And I know there's a lot of beginners out there that are scouring the internet for somebody to tell them the basics. I mean, we're talking the, the, the extreme basics for beginners. Things like, what do I need to buy? How much does it cost? Um, should I get this or that? What bits do I need? What software do I need? And then once they get that, the questions go on and on. So with this video today, we're going to focus on what do you need? What items do you actually need to have in your possession for the day your machine shows up to get started? So stay tuned and we're going to answer those questions. Okay, so first thing is, what machine do I buy? Well, there's a few options out there. Actually, there's a lot of options out there, but we're gonna stick mostly with the hobby shop type options. Nothing major, nothing super expensive. We're not talking about these $20,000, $25,000 machines that can process a whole entire four by eight sheet of uh, plywood or something. We're talking a machine like you've seen in my other videos, the XL or if you prefer something larger like the XXL. Now there's a few things you need to take in consideration when you buy your machine. Number one, how big of a machine should I get? Well, to that I say, as big as you can fit in your shop. Um, I bought the XL, which is roughly 15 by 30 as far as the cut area goes. If I could go back and do it again, I would have bought the XXL and found a way to make room for it. I find myself wanting to make bigger projects and I can't because I bought the XL. Good thing is you can upgrade. That's another topic altogether. So take into consideration how much room you have. Can you adapt a larger machine to your shop and then make your decision? Now on the XL and the XXL, they're exactly the same minus the depth. Uh, the XXL is going to be about 15 inches deeper. So you're going to end up with about a 30 by 30 square uh, area where you can actually do work. Um, the X-Carve, it's all about the same. Um, the one thing I didn't like about X-Carve was I had to convert millimeters to inches just to figure out which machine would best fit my needs. Um, but they both operate basically the same. They run on a belt system and they have a control board that sits outside the machine or in, in Shapeoko's case, it's on the machine. That's where all your motors are uh, wired into, your limit switches um, and anything else that you have connected, the machine's gonna wire into that board. The Shapeoko, it, it fits right onto the side of the machine versus off the machine. That's one of the reasons that I went with Shapeoko. Not only that, but in my opinion, the Shapeoko is a little bit more rigid machine. The rails, the extruded rails are thicker and I feel that they're probably a little stronger. Um, now that being said as well, there's nothing wrong with the X-Carve. Uh, I've never used one, but there's plenty of happy customers out there that will probably tell you that it'll work just as good. And I'm sure it will. So we're not here to do a brand battle. All right, so you decided the machine that you wanted, the size you wanted, and you hit the buy button, you put down your credit card, and it's on the way. Next thing we need to do is figure out what do we need to buy before the machine gets there in order to get started as soon as we get it and assemble it. So next thing we're gonna talk about is end mills. All right, it's time to talk about end mills. So what do you need? What do you need? Well, there's a million different options out there, and when you start shopping, you're gonna find that it's gonna be overwhelming. But I have an easy solution for you. Let's go ahead and get rid of that pile. Come over here to the drawer and get this guy out. This right here is gonna be a starter set. Uh, obviously, the bits aren't in it, but this is what you're looking for. You're looking for something to get you started. Now, white side is a good choice. Uh, you also have Freud. You have uh, uh, lots of other options out there. Something like this is going to be an affordable option. Um, now, I'm going to post some links down in the description of some places where you can get a starter kit. So what comes in this starter kit? Well, it's going to come with this. 
this is going to be your quarter inch flat end mill. Now, what you're looking at here is an upcut end mill. And basically what that means is as it spins, it's taking all your stuff and it's forcing it to the top of your cut. Don't, don't let this confuse you. Um, you'll see when you start cutting how these different bits act, but they're going to do the same thing. Your quarter inch end mill is probably going to be one of the most common ones you use when you get started. You can use this to cut pockets. You can use this to cut things out. Um, but keep in mind, these are round and you can't cut square corners. So when you go to design in your projects with square corners and you cut them out and realize that uh, those square corners have turned into round corners, well, that's why. But there's other options. How about an eighth inch end mill? A little bit smaller. You're going to get a little bit less of a square corner on your cut. Um, these also come in up cut and down cut options, just like the uh, quarter inch. Um, and you also have different shank sizes. Now, if you're going to be buying your machine with a Dewalt router, which is very, very common, these are the sizes that you're going to be allowed to use. You have a quarter inch shank and you have an eighth inch shank. So all the bits that you buy are going to have to be one or the other. You also have options like straight end mills. Now this is just a uh, straight, uh, straight cut two flute bit that I bought from Lowe's. It's made by Bosch. Um, this will do the same thing these will, uh, but the cut that you get may be a little different. Um, if you watch my sign making video for my YouTube channel, I use this and I was actually pretty surprised by how things turned out. Um, then you have stuff like this. Very, very tiny 1 16th inch end mill. Um, now what these are going to be used for is cutting out small parts out of thinner stock and they're going to be used for doing your detail type cuts on some of your pocket carvings like you've seen in my videos. Um, and that's another thing we'll get into when we uh, talk about software and designing. So these right here are probably, like I said, your most common types of bits, but there's more. Take those away, keep them from rolling back into the frame there and we'll get out our V-bits. Now, just about every starter kit you buy is gonna come with these two specific bits. And what are they? Well, we have a 60 degree bit and we have a 90 degree bit. What these are gonna do is allow you to V-carve. And it's pretty simple to explain how these work. They go into the wood, they spin, and you get a channel the same shape as the bit and as deep as you tell the bit to go. Once again, V carving, we'll talk about that in another video, but these two bits you're going to want to have. So most of your starter kits, once again, will come with these two bits. Then we have our conical type bits. Now, this is what I'm going to tell you about these and keep in mind, this is my opinion based off my experience. You probably won't use these bits, for quite a while until you really learn the software in your machine. Mainly these are going to be used for doing 3D carvings. They're going to be for doing texture work and that's really about it. Um, usually your starter kits will come with one or two of these and it's good to have because eventually you'll want to try them. We're not going to talk about those a whole lot in this video but maybe a couple conical bits you'll want to get. Then we've got specialty type stuff. Here's a round over bit, or not a round over bit, I'm sorry. This is a cove bit. Now, what you can do is something like this. Let, you know what, let me back up a minute. What kind of bits will work in your machine? Well, here's a good way to be able to tell. If it can plunge cut in a router from the top down, you can probably use it in your machine. This right here, obviously, when you start running it, it's gonna be spinning and it's gonna be cutting a channel the same shape as the bit. If you watch my video on the cutting board, you'll see how I use this bit. You also have stuff like this. Very, very, very tiny V-bits. Now, what I use these for is for doing extremely detailed, small V-carving operations. And if you watch the video where I did the plaque for the nurse, you'll see where these come in handy. It's gonna be for your very, very small stuff that uh, you want detail in and uh, I find myself using this bit actually quite a bit. And the good thing is these are really cheap. 
uh, you buy a 10 pack of them for like 10 or 15 bucks on eBay. So you might want to pick you up some of those to get started too. Now, <clears throat> once you get all your bits, how do you hold them in your machine? Well, if you're using a Dewalt or even the Makita, I think, but we're going to stick to Dewalt, it's going to come with a collet. Now this collet is what you use to hold your bits. In the Dewalt, you got two options. You've got your quarter inch collet, which if you don't know how these work, this screws into the machine, the bit goes in, and then when you tighten it, it holds onto the bit so it doesn't move. Now you got two options, like I said, with the Dewalt. You can go with a quarter inch or you can go with an eighth inch. Now these bits, these collets right here rather, came from a website called precisebits.com. Do you need to buy an expensive collet to get started? Absolutely not. You can go get <clears throat> a Dewalt eighth inch collet and it comes with a quarter inch, so you'll be set to go. But in the future, you might want to upgrade to something like this. And part of the reason I like that, even if you don't really care about the precision because you're dealing with wood, I like the wrench it comes with and it makes it easier to take the collets on and off. So that to me right there is probably the biggest reason I bought them. So there's your bits. Like I said, link in the description and you'll be able to see some of the other starter kits that uh, will help you along your way, as well as some websites that you can shop for bits at. Okay, so there's a couple more things you're gonna need. Uh, and these are essential, have to haves. You have to have some sort of a computer to run your machine, uh, whether it be a laptop, a tablet uh, that can run Windows programs, or a desktop that uh, you have laying around that you can put out in your garage. Um, they don't have to be uh, too crazy because the, uh, the program that you use to run your machine is not that memory intensive. It, it doesn't take a lot of resources to run it. So um, some sort of a laptop. Me personally, uh, I got a laptop from uh, Best Buy. It was an open box buy and uh, it works just fine. Uh, a few hundred dollars, you, you'll be set to go. And, and a lot of people, they, they've got an old computer laying around that'll be more than enough to run the uh, CAM program of your choice. Uh, in my case, it was Carbide Motion, um, which is an extremely easy to use program to run your machine. And we'll discuss that in a future video as well. Um, <clears throat> Then you've got software. Now this is where the discussion gets complicated. Uh, there's a lot of choices out there. Uh, there's free choices and there's paid choices. Um, some of your free choices are going to be Carbide Create, which is the program that Carbide 3D gives you for free. Um, and honestly, I don't really care for it. It's extremely limited. And in my opinion, it, it's really not that easy to use. Um, like I said, these are just my opinions, so uh, you know we're not trying to get into a discussion here about what's better and what's not. Um, you'll find out when you actually download these programs and try them for yourself. Um, Inventables makes a program called Easel. It's uh, fairly similar to Carbide Create, but there are some differences. Um, and, and at this point, I'm not really sure if uh, Inventables uh, programs will work on all the Shapeoko machines. Uh, I know that they'll work with a one and two, but I don't know about the three. Um, somebody I'm sure will answer that question uh, in the comment section. Um, you have programs like Fusion 360. Uh, it's a free program, but uh, it's, it's extremely hard to, to learn in my opinion. Uh, if you're a beginner, uh, it, it's probably not gonna be the thing you wanna try, but you, know, you may be the kind of person that can catch on to some of this software a lot easier than others and uh, you may find it extremely easy to use. My choice was to pay for a program. Now, there's a company called Vetrix. Uh, I, I don't get paid by them. Uh, I don't have anything to do with them other than the fact that I'm one of their consumers. Um, they make three different programs. They make uh, VCarve Desktop, VCarve Pro, and they make one called Aspire. Now, anybody that told you getting into this hobby is gonna be cheap, uh, they lied right to your face. It's not a cheap hobby. Um, you can make it as cheap as possible, but that old adage, you give what you pay for, that is very true when it comes to software for uh, designing stuff. Um, now, VCarve Desktop. Um, I believe that there are limitations on the size of uh, your, your workspace that you can create stuff in with it, and there's a few other things that it lacks. 
uh, VCarve Pro, it's probably going to be the best choice. Um, it has a lot of automated features. Uh, the, the tool selections and settings are easy to understand and use. Um, it, it's just an all around easy uh, program to learn. If you watch any of my other videos, uh, I, a couple of them I show designing some stuff in it, and we'll get into it in a later video on, on some of the processes that you need to go through to design things and export tool paths and, and you know, post processors and all that stuff that you may be really confused about right now. And we'll try to simplify it in a later video. But as far as the software goes, VCarb Pro will set you back about seven or 800 bucks. I want to say it's probably close to $800 right now. I do know that with uh, Inventables and the X-Carve, you can bundle it with your machine and get it for five something. So if you go with the X-Carve, that may be, may be the time to actually buy the software. Um, now Aspire, it's, uh, it's pretty expensive. It's, if I'm not mistaken, $1,700 to $2,000 or so. Um, you may not want to start out with that program. Uh, I think, in my opinion, that that, that program is going to be geared more towards uh, doing a lot of 3D work. Um, one of these days, I'll probably upgrade to it, but I just don't need it yet, so I'm not going to. Um, but VCar Pro, it, it, it's just an amazing program. It, it makes it so easy to be able to design stuff, especially for a beginner. Now the good thing about it is you can download a trial version for free and you can actually play around with it before you get your machine. And that is what I would suggest you do. I would suggest you do that with Carbide Motion and Easel as well. And for that matter, uh, give a shot with uh, Fusion 360. You may find that uh, one of those free programs is really a ticket for you. But I would almost be willing to bet you that when you start playing around with VCarve, you'll be sold on it by itself. So, like I said, it, it's not going to be a super cheap hobby all the time. Uh, you can make it that way as long as you're able to learn other, other pieces of software, but uh, I, I'm just not convinced that uh, the free software is absolutely the way to go. So download the programs, play around with them, make your decision before you get your machine, and that way when you get it, you'll be all set up and ready to go. So anyway, that's going to be about it for this video. Hopefully I've explained everything that you need to actually have physically in your possession or download it on your computer in order to get started. So the next video, we're probably going to discuss the first projects you should make with your machine. And we might even go into the program a little bit of VCar Pro and, and, and show you how to make some of those things and how easy it is. Uh, so if you like the video, please subscribe to it. If you have any questions, please ask me in the comments. Uh, I'm not afraid to answer. I, I pretty much answer every person that asks me a question. I'll even send you an email and uh, explain something in more detail if you need. But like I said, please subscribe to the video and thanks for watching.